Why are you so afraid of gender equality? Why do I deserve to be paid less than you? In what world does 77 cents equal a dollar? In what world does 68 cents equal a dollar? How is that fair? Why are you intimidated by a woman who makes more money than you? That's awesome! More money! Why are opinionated women seen as bitches? When opinionated men are seen as bosses. Why aren't you speaking up when you hear your male friends behind closed doors make jokes that are offensive to women? Why are you so afraid of recognizing your own privilege? Doesn't mean you're a bad person. Just recognize it and do something about it. John Doyle in. Heck off, Kami. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Heck Off, Kami. This is the last video that you will see before the epic Minecraft Let's Play slash Q&A. So if you've got any questions for that video that you would like answered, go to the Climate Activist video and leave them in the comments. The link to that video will be in the description. Also, on October 10th, the Heck Off, Kami merchandise will go live, so be sure to get it before it's sold out. And yeah, someone in the comments was like, we need a shirt that says, bro, you look like pizza. So of course, I will deliver. And also, I do have to clarify because apparently some of you interpreted that as, Okay, well, this kid must have had acne, and that's why he said he looked like a pizza. No, no, no. It just went right over your head. Making fun of someone for having acne is in bad taste. I would not do that. The whole point of me saying, bro, you look like pizza, is because it means absolutely nothing. That's the point. There is no point. And that's what I was getting at, because this guy couldn't take us just saying stupid stuff to try to mess with him without deciding it was affecting his mental health. And I can tell all the people in the audience, all the Gen Xers, all the boomers, and even millennials, frankly, they're trying to figure this out like, hmm, why would he call his friend a pizza? What did John Doyle mean by that? No, you're thinking too far into it. The point is that there is no point, and only the Zoomers can really understand that. Only Generation Z gets that. That's why Generation Z is going to cash out on the bro, you look like pizza t-shirts from the Heck Off Commie store. Last thing, follow me on Twitter and Instagram for a chance to win an exact copy of the iconic, world-famous Heck Off Kami laptop that will also be announced during the epic Minecraft Let's Play. All right, let's talk about the females now, uh, the females in their possession of the absolute privilege. I really started thinking about this after watching Joker, and so we'll talk a little bit about that without giving away any spoilers. And we've already talked about why the left hated this movie before it was even released. You can go back and find those videos if you'd like. Um, Really what it boiled down to is that they didn't want the public to acknowledge as a result of this story the reality of the state of men in this country. And you can go back again and watch those videos if you'd like to. But really what the movie was about was a man suffering the effects of a society that doesn't care about him. And what I mean by that is it wasn't just a story about a man who's had a rough time in his life. But more specifically, it was about a man living in a society that treats him as completely expendable or even disposable, which I think was a symbolic significance for the piles of garbage throughout the city. And so we have hundreds or probably even thousands of movies that tell stories of people who have had rough lives. But this movie in particular focused on a man who suffers from mental illness as a result of we'll just say things that happened to him as a child. He's never amounted to much. He still lives with his mother. But in addition to all of that, he's bullied and ostracized by society. He's assaulted the people who are supposed to support him, his mother, his coworkers, one in particular, um, his therapist. They all end up not supporting him. Again, speaking in vague terms so as not to give away too much. Just go see the movie. You know, we're trying to break the box office record here. And uh, so that's the whole story. You know, this guy just snaps because of this and becomes what we know as the Joker. And so I was thinking about that review from that feminist that we covered in the other video in which she wrote that she didn't want a story for lonely white boys to relate to. And I sort of realized at that moment the gravity of the situation, which is that she will never be able to truly comprehend a story like that. It just will never happen. And the reason for that, which is the thesis of this video, is that women have the absolute privilege in this society, which is that they are cherished. And I know this may not seem like a very insightful statement to make, like, wow, really, John, women are cherished? It freaking blew my mind. No, chill out for a second. Women in general, obviously there are exceptions, but exceptions don't disprove tendencies. They will never be able to understand, nor will they ever be able to relate to the feeling of being expendable in society. And the reason for this from a scientific and psychological perspective is that women only have a finite number of eggs. Therefore, they have a finite capacity for reproduction, whereas men could conceivably have an infinite number of children. And just such is not the case for women. So because of that, because of the fact that they are more proportionately necessary for the creation of life than men, society cherishes women. Society cherishes women as a result of two things, one of which being 
the desire for women out of pure necessity for perpetuating the species, but also because they can only produce a finite amount of children and each child has a relatively long gestation period. And also that women are the weaker gender. And because of that, they're more vulnerable than men are. And because they are both desired and comparatively weak, they need to be protected. And that's what leads me to the word cherished because they are desired and protected by society. And let me be extremely clear. I am in no way suggesting that this is a bad system. In fact, it's the best system and it exists for a reason. But the result of that system is that men are expendable. Women and children, they board the lifeboats first. Men go off to die in wars. I mean, you know what I'm talking about. And again, I'm not saying that this is inherently a bad system. In fact, I wouldn't even call it a symptom as much as I would call it the biological reality of our species. I mean, the problems actually arise when people view it as a system implying that it's a means of operating that we had previously decided upon and can change at our will. That's not accurate. And so I retract that. It's not a system. It's the reality of our nature. And I'm not saying that that's necessarily bad. I'm just saying that feminist types need to recognize that because they are women, they are inherently more valuable in the eyes of society. And any woman could at any time need help at almost any magnitude, and she would receive it from either older generations of both men and women, depending on her age, or just men in general. And I get it. I know you're a strong, independent woman. You don't need help from anyone. You worked your butt off to get your humanities degree. I get it. But you have to acknowledge that a societal safety net exists for you that will never exist for men. Well, I'm not even asking for the safety net. It's not my fault men want to support me. Again, I'm not saying that it is. I'm not saying you're asking for it. I'm simply stating the fact that if you ever needed it, it would be there. And men just don't have that, and we never will. And I'm not complaining about that. I understand it. I understand it quite well. My complaint is just that the feminist types pretend that this doesn't exist. And it's all just in the abstract right now. But this has actually gotten a lot worse in the last few decades because women are working now. They're attending college at higher rates than men. They're earning the majority of degrees. They're earning the majority of advanced degrees. They're out earning men in many cases. They're now make up the majority of managerial positions in the workforce. And hey, you know, good for them, right? Girl power. But we have to talk about the consequences of that. And I don't hear a lot of people on the right talking about it. And honestly, I can't tell you why. The problem just seems so clear to me and the effects of it are so clear within our culture. And it's like, you know, we won't name names, but you know who I'm talking about. Just, well, how Ronald Reagan saved the United States from socialism. Like, dude, that was 30 years ago. I get it. Yay, Ronald Reagan. Praise St. Reagan. But you got to snap out of it. The Reagan revolution was subverted by bad actors. And now we're watching the Trump revolution be subverted by bad actors. It's time to wake up. You've got 100 men committing suicide every day in this country. Well, but John, did you know that if we return to the regulatory levels as recent as 2000, our GDP would be, I don't care. I really don't care. I'm a free market guy just like you are. I wholeheartedly believe that capitalism is the best economic system that we have, and I stand by it. But we have to stop treating it as a religion, like seriously, like, hey, Women are working and out earning men now. And because they've been neurologically programmed through 5 million years of cognitive evolution to be attracted to men who have more resources than they do, you've got a shift in the scale to where instead of how it used to be with women and men matching up at roughly the same level, where a man who didn't make a whole lot of money might be competing with similar men for a woman who wasn't really that good looking because another reality of our species is that men regard physical attractiveness to be extremely important in mate selection and women regard resource potential or actuality to be very important and mate selection, but now because women have elevated themselves in the masculine realm, where now they're working and they've become economically independent to some degree, but they're still looking for men who have more than they do. So now you've got men who are earning an above average salary competing for women who normally would have had men making an average or even you know, below average amount of money competing for them. And the men who aren't making a lot of money are basically forgotten about. They're just expendable. They are disposable. And you wonder why so many of these young men are turning to socialism, why they're rejecting capitalism. Sure, it's not capitalism's fault that they're in the position they're in. We know that, but do you think they even care? And I've had a wave of leftists recently accusing me of repeating incel talking points, which is an utterly absurd thing to say. And they're probably only doing it in the first place because they know that failure to address these issues leads people to wrongfully assign blame to capitalism and then turn to leftism because they think it works in their favor. And so it works out for them. You know, I'm sitting here like, hey, let's talk about the problems in this country with the state of men. Maybe we should have an honest discussion about their role in society being undermined. And that anyone would respond to that with hostility just astounds me. I mean, the reality of our species is that men are here to provide for women and for their children, and women are here to have children and to nurture them. Seriously explain to me why that is controversial. That's not even a social construct. In fact, these are observed desires. Men desire to provide for their families. Women desire to raise their children. And now because of leftism, men are less able to provide for their children and for their families because of stagnant wages, thanks to mass importation of low-skill immigrants or even the H-1B visas, which are a total scam. And women are less able to nurture their children because they are now shamed for wanting to stay at home with their children to raise them, despite that the vast majority of women would prefer to do that 
And they're also less able to do that in the first place, even if they wanted to, because they're entering into careers with high workloads. They have they have less children now than previous generations. Our fertility rate is below replacement. And, you know, given all that, it's like we're scratching our heads like, why is everyone so depressed now? Why is everyone strung out on drugs? And why is everyone on medication these days? Why is everyone shooting places up? Why is everyone committing suicide? Because we have managed to corrupt the most fundamental purpose of our existence, which has existed for millions of years. And we've got this microscopic period of human history, maybe the last 200 years or so, where we've actually achieved civilized society. And more recently, within the last 60 years, where we've actually managed to corrupt our purpose, our raison d'etre the reason we're here to form stable families that's the whole point shove your iphone up your ass that's not even real none of this is real your social media isn't real your degree isn't real your your profession your possessions none of that's real that means squat the only thing that matters is the family and this is where the MGTOW guys get mad at me they're like john don't you see Women have become undesirable. We have to abandon marriage. It's like, okay, I understand where you're coming from, but the solution to creating better women is to create better men. And I know we've talked a lot about issues affecting men, but that doesn't absolve them of responsibility. There's a lot that men could do to improve themselves. But that aside, this is part of what I was trying to get across when I was talking about social conservatism the other day. This is what's going to happen if you're only concerned with preserving low taxes and low spending. If you aren't concerned at all with conserving the social fabric of the country, not only is the society eventually going to implode, which you could argue we're seeing symptoms of now, you're eventually going to lose the fiscal battle anyways. Because if you're mass importing workers that take jobs away from Americans and you depress the wages in this country to where now both men and women have to work to support themselves, you've still got the school systems favoring women. And we didn't even touch on the other privileges that they have in society pertaining to their advancement, but we will at some point. But now, because of that, they're out earning men and making the already disposable man even more disposable. And maybe that man begins to resent the system that he perceives to be the cause of this in the first place, which would be capitalism. Even though what we have now is definitely not capitalism and the cause of the problem isn't capitalism, he doesn't care. He's just looking for any alternative to what he currently has. And so he embraces socialism. Why do you think the left supports open border policies for immigration? They know what it does to the economy. They know what it does to the perception that the voters have of the free market. Why do you think the left slanders people like me for speaking out about these issues? It's because it helps them. It's because it helps them achieve their agenda, which is total control and the removal of your rights as a result. So given that, you have to recognize the importance of conserving the social fabric of the country because everything else is downstream from that. And this isn't to create a false dichotomy of, oh, you can either focus on the economic freedom or the social fabric. No, that's not what I'm saying. Apparently, some people interpreted what I was saying in the last video that we touched on this. I'm simply saying a lot of people seem to only be concerned with one facet of what we would consider conservatism to be, whereas they really should be concerned with every facet of it because it's all extremely important. And the left is definitely concerned with eroding all of it. And because of that, we have to have a strong defense because if we pick and choose where we're playing defense here, we're going to keep losing ground. Losing ground. That's a nod for those of you who get it. But we're going to keep losing ground in this fight until we're left with practically nothing. And there's not a whole lot that can be done about that.